And it's a pleasure to me to announce Professor Cicero Carvalho from University of Uberlândia. Uh, he's an expert in, in topics related to finite fields, coding theory, and number theory. And today he will talk about uncertain families of locally recover, recoverable, wait, recoverable codes. <laughs> I'm sorry for that. And, and, and thank you for accepting our invitation, Cicero. I just an announcement, Cicero, before your talk, that we are going to take a picture of, at the end of Cicero's talk, there will be a picture of all the sections, okay? So, well remembered. Thank Ma, you. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, so uh, thank you very much. Thank you, uh, Mateus, for this uh, nice intro, uh, introduction, but uh, actually I'm not an expert in anything, <laughs> maybe. I'm becoming expert in surviving the pandemic, but <laughs> we are all are becoming expert in this. So anyway, thank you very much for the invitation to talk in this uh, workshop. And thank you for organizing again this uh, number theory section. And I also thank the organizers of the workshop for putting up the workshop again in this so, um, let's say not very nice conditions. But anyway, we carry on. <laughs> So my talk will be about the uh, families of locally recoverable codes. So uh, let me start by uh, just uh, recalling the, the basics and then uh, just to introduce the notation. So FQ will be a finite field with Q elements. We know that a code is of length M is just an FQ subspace of FQ to the M. And then we know that the vectors in the code are called code words. And given the M tuples alpha and beta in FQ to the M, the hemming distance between these uh, two M tuples is just a number of entries which are distinct. And uh, the minimum distance of a code is just the minimum of the distance, this hemming distance between two distinct code words. And since the code is a subvector space, so this amount calculated the, the distance between alpha and beta is just a calculating, is equal to calculating the distance between alpha minus beta and zero. And so uh, actually uh, to calculate the minimum distance, it amounts to calculate the minimum of the distance between non-zero code words and zero. And uh, the distance between a non-zero code word and zero is just the weight of the code word. Okay, so now that we know what, what a code is, so the question is how to define code? Well, uh, well since codes are just FQ subspaces, so you would think that, well, suffice it to get a, to pick up a set of linearly independent sets and see what is the subspace that this set defines. But the fact is that if you, of course you can do that, but if you do that, it will, may, it will probably be, be very difficult to determine the minimum distance, even for codes defined over F2. So there are several papers that shows this. And uh, I just uh, put this, I, I, I I, I copied the, the, the title of this one here because it has a very nice title, the intract, intractability of computing the minimum distance of a code. So you don't really need to read the paper to know what the guy means. So uh, what we frequently do is that we build codes using geometric or algebraic structures so that we can uh, use properties of these structures to determine the minimum distance, or at least to get a bound for the minimum distance. So in this talk, we will present uh, codes that uh, belong to this class of the so-called evaluation codes. So the idea is to start with a, a, a subset of the finite space over FQ. So we start with a finite number of points. So, so this is a, the, the, the geometric object, a finite number of points. And then you consider, we, we call this a set X. And then you consider the ideal I sub X, which is the ideal formed by all polynomials in this uh, polynomial ring, uh, which uh, are zero in every point of X, okay? So uh, you can define this evaluation map from this quotient ring to FQ to the M, given by you take a, a class of a polynomial and you just evaluate the polynomial the points P1 to PM. Of course, uh, since I sub X is the ideal form by polynomials which are zero in every point, this is uh, well-defined. And also, this is also uh, is clearly, clearly an FQ linear transformation because you can think of this quotient not as a ring, which of course is natural, but you can also think of this 
uh, on, uh, about this ring as being an FQ linear space. So in this sense, this FQ is an FQ linear transformation and you can naturally show that it is an isomorphism. So given a subspace L of this quotient ring seen as an FQ vector space, the image of the subspace is uh, of course a subspace, a subspace of FQ to the M. So is a code which we call the evaluation code associated to L. Of course, it has length M and dimension equal to the dimension of L because phi is an isomorphism. So for such codes, we may use tools from Graeber and Bayes' theory in order, to, in order to determine a lower bound for the minimum distance. So um, I will talk a little bit about Graeber and Bayes. Uh, so let this script M be the set of monomials in this uh, polynomial ring. So monomials is just a monomial is just a product of powers of the variables. So we endow the set of monomials with a monomial order. What is a monomial order? It's just a total order in the set such that one is the least monomial. And if you have an uh, inequality of monomials, you, you may multiply this inequality by uh, the same monomial and uh, the inequality still holds, okay? So this is a monomial order, okay? So um, given a non-zero polynomial, what is a non-zero polynomial? A non-zero polynomial is just a, a finite sum of monomials possibly multiplied by uh, coefficients. Uh, in the field K. So, uh, of course, there, there must be a greater monomial. Uh, so, this is called the leading monomial of the polynomial. Okay? It is the greatest monomial appearing in F. So, um, let I be an ideal. So, we say that a finite set of elements in I is a greater basis for I. Of course, we have to fix a certain monomial order. If the leading monomial of any non-zero polynomial in I is a multiple of the leading monomial of one of these guys, okay? So if this happens, this set is called a Gremlin basis for the ideal. And one can prove that such a set is a basis for the ideal in the usual, usual sense of a, generate, a set of generators for the ideal, okay? So a uh, Gremlin basis appears in the PhD the thesis of Bruno Buchberger, which was published in 1965. And in his thesis, he showed that starting with a generating set for I, one may enlarge the set using an algorithm that he presented in the, in the thesis, such that after a finite number of, step, of steps, you have another generating set, which satisfies that definition of Gremlin basis, okay? Of course, later you may do some optimization process to have fewer uh, number of, a few, uh, fewer number of generators, which is still is a Gremlin basis, but we are not worried with that, okay? So his thesis problem was to determine a basis for this quotient ring, okay? as seen at uh, a, a K vector space. And he showed that such a basis is given by the classes of the monomials in the set. So you take monomial, a monomial, such that the monomial is not the leading monomial of any polynomial in I. So you take, if you take the set of monomials, which are not the leading monomial of any polynomial in I, you take the classes of these monomials, this is a basis for this quotient ring considered as a K vector space. And this set is known today as the footprint of the ideal, okay? So we have after fixing now. So let me just recall that a Gremlin basis is just a set as a finite set of polynomials in the ideals such that uh, if the linear monomial of any non-zero polynomial is a multiple of some of, some of, the, of these guys. Okay, so uh, if this happened, this is a Gremlin basis and the footprint is just a set of monomials which are not leading monomials of any polynomials in I. So from these definitions, which are sort of, sort of complementary, you see it's not easy to, uh, it's not uh, difficult to prove that a monomial is in the footprint if and only if the monomial is not a multiple of the leading monomial of any of these guys when you have a Gremlin basis, okay? Okay, so uh, there is a way to see the footprint in a way. If we associate it to this monomial, 
this n tuple made up of the exponents which appear in the monomial. Okay, so uh, for example, assume that you have an ideal here in a, mon a polynomial ring with just two, two variables. So this uh, uh, this is a Grebner basis for this ideal, which composed by only three polynomials, such that the linear monomial of u1 is x1 times x2 to the seven, and so on. So uh, we may plot the points uh, corresponding to these uh, linear monomials. For example, this this monomial. To this monomial corresponds the point one, seven. To this monomial corresponds the point six, four. To this monomial corresponds the point eight, one. Okay, so now we may take, uh, we may uh, mark all the, the points which correspond to monomials, which are multiples of this linear monomial. So this, this is the set of points which corresponds to these monomials. For example, this point here, this point here. Uh, this point here is the point two seven. So of course, uh, corresponds to the to the monomial x one to this monomial multiplied by x one, and so on. So it goes. For example, where where what are the points that corresponds to monomials which are multiple of this monomial? So all monomials in this region corresponds to monomials which are multiple of this monomial, and all the monomials in this region corresponds to monomial. Uh, which are monomials, which are multiple of these monomials. So the monomials, which are the points which are left here, correspond to monomials, which are not multiples of the leading monomials of any of these guys. And since this is a Gravener base, so this is a picture, so to speak, of the footprint. So maybe that's where the name comes from, okay? Other uh, concepts that I want to introduce, uh, let J be a, a, an ideal which is generated by H1 to HT, maybe not a Gramian basis. And then we define this delta, uh, delta of these leading monomials. This is just a set of monomials which are not multiples of, the, of any of these monomials, okay? So clearly the footprint of J is contained in the set. Another interesting, uh, uh, important, important uh, concept that we will use is uh, let V, uh, J an ideal, and let V, J be the set of points in the affine space, which are zeros of all polynomials in J. So this is, of course, the affine variety corresponding to the ideal J. One may show that if the footprint is finite, then the number of points in the variety is also finite, and the number of points in the variety is less or equal than uh, the number of points uh, in the number of elements in the footprint, okay? Uh, we present an example to which we will refer later. So now I will give an example of uh, an evaluation code, okay? This example was originally, uh, appeared originally, originally in a paper by uh, Ida Lopes, uh, Rafael Villarreal, and uh, uh, Carlos Renteria Marquez, okay? So they did the following. You consider n non-empty subsets of FQ. Okay, uh, let's uh, say that uh, the number of points in AI, the number of elements in AI is D sub I, okay? And we assume this technical condition that these uh, uh, subsets of FQ are ordered like this by, by cardinality, okay? So now we take the Cartesian product of the sets, then we have a subset of the affine space uh, AM defined over FQ, and of course, the number of points in this set is just a product of these cardinalities, which we call M. Okay, so uh, in this uh, polynomial ring, we define N polynomials, Fi, okay? So this Fi is a polynomial in just a variable Xi. So it's just the product of Xi minus all the elements in Ai, okay? So of course, the degree of Fi is Di. And uh, then we take I to be the, ideal generated by these polynomials. Then it's easy to see that X is the variety of I, is exactly the, the set of points, which are zeros of four polynomials here. In of, it's also easy to show that uh, I is the ideal of all polynomials, which are zero in all the points of X. So I is what I, I was calling I sub X. So uh, now we consider this subspace of that quotient ring the classes of polynomials which are either zero or have degree up to a certain D. D is a non-zero uh, non 
a non-negative integer which we, we fix. Then this is a subspace of that quotient ring. We may consider the image of the subspace using phi. So this image is what we call the, a fine Cartesian code of order D, okay? So one may show that this uh, generating set for I is actually a Graeber basis for I, actually with, actually with respect to any monomial order. And the footprint has exactly this number of monomials, M monomials. This is easy to see, so to speak, because uh, let's assume that we have just two variables. So uh, the point corresponding to the leading monomial of F1 is of course X1 to the D1. So we have this point which corresponds to this monomial and we take away all the points which corresponds to monomials which are multiples of this monomial. Likewise, the leading monomial of F2 is X2 to the D2. So we have this, this point which corresponds to this monomial and we take away all the polynomials, all the, the, the monomials which are multiples of this monomial. So what is left is the footprint. So in this case is a rectangle, in general cases a cube, a hypercube or something like that. So anyway, it's easy to see that it has this number of monomials. So uh, as for the dimension of this code, we have that the dimension of the code, of course, is a dimension equal to the dimension of LD because phi is an isomorphism. And then we may show that this, uh, the, the classes of the monomials in the footprint, which have degree less or equal than D, this form a basis for this, uh, this, um, this subspace, which we have defined here, okay? So we just have to count them as monomials and the, this is the dimension of the code. So later I will show a way to count the, these monomials, okay? In a more general setting. As for the minimum distance, uh, so take a a, the class of a polynomial in LD, okay? So of course the degree of the polynomial is less or equal than D. We would like to estimate the weight of the code word associated to this class. So we evaluate this class using phi, and we want to estimate the weight of this class, uh, weight, the weight of this code word. So clearly the weight of this code word, the number of non-zero entries, is the number, the total number of entries, which is m, minus the number of entries which are zero. And the number of entries which are zero is just the number of points, which are points of x, so points that correspond to the variety of x, which are also zero of f a zero of f. So this is the variety corresponding to this ideal, i plus f, so to speak. So as observed before, we have this uh, inclusion. So uh, here we have the delta set associated to the leading monomials of the generators of i and the leading monomial of f. And uh, so since uh, we know that this is a basis for LD, we may assume that f is actually a sum of monomials uh, in, the, in the footprint, which have degree less or equal than D. So we may assume that uh, the, the, the leading monomial of F is one of these monomials. So it, the degree of this leading monomial is less or equal than D, okay? So uh, this, this uh, the cardinality of this set is exactly, uh, we, we may also make a picture of this set. So we, we take away all the points which corresponds to monomials, which are multiples of these monomials here. And we also take away the polynomial, the monomials, which are multiples of the leading monomial of F. So we are left with the original footprint minus this uh, rectangle here, if you think in, in two variables, only in two variables. In the general setting, we have the number of, points in the footprint minus a certain hypercube here, number of points in a hypercube here. So this is the cardinality of the set. But we also know that the, so of course now we know that the footprint because of this inclusion, since this is a finite set, we know that this is also a finite set. So we know that the number of points in the variety associated to this ideal is less or equal than the number of points in this footprint. So, Let's go back here. We have that the weight of this code word is the total number of entries minus the number of entries, which are zero. Now we have um, this, um, this, um, now we have, uh, let me see. 
Mm. Now we have this inequality here. So using this inequality here, we come to this inequality. And now using this inclusion, we come to this inequality. And actually we know the, 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 the value of this cardinality, which is this one. So recall that this product is exactly M. So there's a M canceling here and we have, this is a lower bound for the weight of this cold one, okay? So we proved that the minimum value of this uh, function, so to speak, of this A's is uh, this number here. To understand this number, so th this, here we have the cardinalities of the, the cardinality of the sets AI, but here we also have this L and this K. So this L and this K, they are determined when we write D uniquely in this way. We write D equals to D1 minus one plus D2 minus two, but you have, you have a certain remainder, which is less than DK plus one minus, sorry. You write D equals D1 minus one, D2 minus one, but you have a certain remainder, which is less than DK plus one minus one. So that's how you, de you determine L and K. So the minimum of this value, the minimum value of this expression is this number. And so this is a lower bound for the lower bounds <laughs> for the weight of the code words. And we just proved that there is a, um, a code word which attains this lower bound, okay? This, uh, this was done, uh, I did this in a, in, a, in a paper a long time ago, but of course, the determination of the value of this minimum distance was made in the original paper of uh, Ida Lopes, Rafael Virgil, and the Carlos Venteria Marx. I just, uh, I, let's say that I reproved the result in a more uh, simple way, I think. Okay, so now, to, now that we understood this example, which we will come back later, let me uh, talk about locally recoverable codes. So what happens is that in the so-called distributed storage systems, which are uh, common when you have these uh, cloud storages, when you storage things in the cloud, typically the, doubt, the, the data when you store in the cloud, this data is split and stored in several servers. So when you want to recover this data and send it uh, elsewhere, what we have is that the tuple that is formed, uh, uh, parts of the tuple comes different parts of the tuple comes from different servers. So you, you, a part was stored in the server blue, another part in the server green, so on. And sometimes due to machine failure, one of more of these entries are not sent. So the code word is formed with an erasure. So there's a, an empty space someplace. And you want to correct that in a, in a very more efficient way than the usual uh, error correcting process. So to address this problem, in 2012, Gopala and the collaborators, they introduced this concept of locally recoverable codes. So uh, they say that a code is locally rec recoverable with locality R, if an entry at the position J of a code word may be recovered from entries in at most are other positions of a set SJ. So for every position, they, they're, they're J, there's this uh, recovery set SJ, uh, and you may recover the position J using the entries in at most R other positions in the set SJ. So in that same paper, the authors proved the version of the singleton bound for codes which have this property of being locally recoverable with locality R. So this is the version they have for the single to bound for these codes. <clears throat> okay, so later in 2012, Prakash and collaborators generalized the concept of locally recoverable codes to the concept of codes with R delta locality, also called R delta locally recoverable codes. And the idea is the following. So you take R to be a, a positive integer, delta to be a positive integer greater or equal than two. And we, you say that a code is R delta locally recoverable if for every position J, there exists a subset RJ containing J. So they decided to, to uh, demand that J 
The Rj contains the position J. It's just a matter of taste, but okay. Rj contains J and Rj uh, has cardinality at most R plus delta minus one, such that the entries at any R positions in Rj determine the entries at the remaining positions, in particular at the position J. Okay, so the idea here, so let me compare this to the former uh, definition. The idea is that if there is an erasure in, at position J, one may recover the original entry from entries in at most R positions in the set Rj, even if, if we happen to have at most delta minus two erasures in other positions of Rj, because Rj has cardinality at most R plus delta minus one. We may write this like this, R plus one plus delta minus two. So here this one, represents the position J, are the positions that you will access to recover J, and you, you don't need to use these posi positions, delta minus two. So uh, you may have erasures even in the recovery set. So uh, they again, they also prove the version of the singleton bound, which holds for this code. So this is the version of the singleton bound for codes which have this property. And uh, when equality holds, they called the codes optimal codes. Okay. Okay. So uh, now uh, I will present a subcode of those affine Cartesian codes, which I have just talked about, uh, which, um, which is a, a R delta locally recoverable code. So I will present uh, this this uh, R delta local recovery code, which appeared in a joint work by Bruno, and, uh, together with Bruno Andrade, Victor Neumann, and Antonio Vega. These guys are also uh, all a uh, professor at my university. So as before, uh, we take N subsets of FQ with cardinalities like this, and uh, we write di for the cardinality of ai. We take x to be the Cartesian product of the, this n subsets. And of course, the cardinality of x is just the product of the cardinality of the ais, which you call m. OK, so again, in this uh, polynomial ring, we define those polynomials fi, which is just the product of xi minus all the elements in ai. We do this for all i when we take i to be the ideal of the polynomial ring generated by f1 to fn. Again, x is the variety of i and i is the ideal of the variety x. Okay, so let d greater equal than zero be an integer again. And uh, I recall that when we had, we considered this set of classes, which I called L of D with classes of polynomials, which are either zero or have degree up to D, then the image using phi was what we call a finite Cartesian code of further D. Now we do the following. We fix a number from one to N. We fix a number and we call this number X, S. And we choose a integer delta greater than two, such that DS, which DS is the cardinality of AS. A sub s. So ds minus delta plus one is greater than one. Okay. So now we consider this, which is also a subspace of that quotient ring. Classes of polynomials such that this polynomial, these classes belong to L sub d. And when you look at f as a polynomial in the variable xs, the degree of f in the variable xs is less than ds minus delta plus one. Okay, and then we just take the image of this subspace using phi, and we call this C D delta S, and uh, we proved that this C D delta S is an R delta locally recoverable code, with R being this number here. Okay, I won't prove this uh, here. I will, I will make a proof later in the, in the talk, uh, which will sort of contain this case, okay? Okay, so to determine the dimension, but let's assume that this is our, our delta locally recovery code. To determine the dimension of this code, so what we did, we did a similar thing, similar to the affine Cartesian codes. We proved that this set, the set of classes of polynomials, which are in the footprint, have degree 
less or equal than D, and the power of Xs in the monomial is less than Ds minus delta plus one. So this set of monomials is a basis for that set that we have just defined. Okay, so the dimension of our code is just the number of monomials there. Okay, and again later I will show a way to count this, these monomials. We also proved that uh, let this d tilde be the sum of di minus one, i ranging from one to n, except s plus ds minus delta. Okay, so in this case, the dimension of this code is exactly this number here, okay? For all d greater or equal than d tilde. So this is a typical, let's say, Reed-Miller situation. If you are accustomed to Reed-Miller codes, you know that Reed-Miller codes, when uh, you, the degree of, the, of the, the polynomials that you are considering is greater or equal than a certain number, the dimension doesn't change. The same thing happens here. Uh, all these codes that I'm talking are Reed Miller type codes. We, we, we can say that. We also proved that. Uh, suppose, uh, assume that you do the, you take the Cartesian product of all the, all the AIs except AS. So call this XS, okay? And you write CSD for the affine Cartesian code of order D defined using the points of XS. Of course, you can do that. Uh, so let d be greater or equal than one and less than this d tilde, okay? So if d is greater or equal than one and less than ds minus delta plus one, then the dimension of the code that we have just defined coincides with the dimension of the affine Cartesian code, okay? And uh, the usual affine Cartesian code. And if d is in this range greater or equal than ds minus delta plus one, and less than d tilde, then the dimension of the code that we have defined is equal to the dimension of the affine Cartesian code of order d minus the sum of these dimensions of this affine Cartesian codes here, CS something, okay? So we related somehow the dimension of the codes that we have defined to affine to the dimension of affine other affine Cartesian codes. Okay, okay. So we also proved some results about the minimum distance of these codes, okay? So let D be a number, uh, an integer greater or equal than one and less than this product. So again, write D in that way. D1 minus one plus D2 minus two until you have a set of remainder which is less than DK plus one minus one. Okay, so then you determine K and L. So we have that. The, the minimum distance of the affine Cartesian code of order D is less or equal than the minimum distance of the codes that we have defined and is less or equal than this number. So actually this last inequality we didn't prove. This comes for free from that uh, version of the singleton bound uh, that I mentioned before for, for our delta lo uh, locally recoverable codes. So, Okay, and so actually you proved only this inequality. So R here is just this number, ds minus delta plus one. And also we proved that if you have these two conditions here or this other set of two conditions, then we have equality here, okay? Equality here. Okay, so uh, again, let the tilde be this the same number that we had I had defined before. So the codes, these codes, C d tilde delta S and C d tilde minus one delta S are optimal. So we have equality here, equality here, when you, we replace D by d tilde or d tilde minus one. And we have the minimum distance equal to delta and delta plus one respectively. We also proved that in the special case where the subsets that we consider in FU are not only subsets, but subfields, then we have the converse of this last, uh, this last uh, um, statement here. Then if this dimension is equal, then one of these two sets of conditions hold, okay? So this is uh, part of this paper. Uh, together with uh, 
Bruno, uh, Victor, and uh, Antonio. Okay, so now let me talk about local recovery codes with availability, another type of codes. So this is 2016, uh, Rowat and collaborators, they introduced the concept of locally recoverable codes with availability T, which extends the regional concept of locally recoverable codes. The regional codes, not our Delta locally code. Uh, are Delta locally recoverable, the regional concept of locally recoverable codes. So these are codes where to each position J in a code word, there are associated T pairwise disjoint recovering sets, S1J to STJ, with at most R other positions, such that the entry at position J may be recovered from the entries at positions in any of the set. So it's a, the generalization they did is instead of considering one uh, recovery set, now you have T at these joint recovery sets, okay? So in a joint work with Victor Neumann, distinct from the one that I just talked about, we constructed a family of codes with which combine features from the concept of codes with availability with features of those are Delta locally recoverable codes. So let me uh, uh, explain what we, did, what we did in a general way. Then I will go into the specifics. So for certain positive integers, Delta one to Delta T and R1 to RT, we obtain codes such that for each position J, there exist R recovering sets R1J to RTJ all the sets contain the position J but if you take the out the position J then you have T a pairwise disjoint sets and also for each I the cardinality of the the recovering set RIJ is RI plus delta I minus one and the entries of at any set of Ri positions in this set Rij, determine the entries in the remaining delta i minus one positions. So now we, you, we have T recovering sets, but we also may afford certain number of erasures in the sets, in the recovering sets. So we combine these two ideas. So let me uh, explain what we did again is a subset of the affine Cartesian code that I talked uh, in the first place in this talk. So again, we take uh, AI uh, to be a um, um, subset of FQ. And uh, again, we assume this technical condition in the cardinalities. We take X to be the Cartesian product. We, we write the I to be the cardinality of the AIs. The cardinal of X we call M. In this ring of polynomials, we take this those polynomials F1 to Fn, and then X is the variety of phi. As before, we have the evaluation morphism. Okay, this phi, which we know that is an isomorphism. Okay, now for all i, let the delta i greater or equal than two be to be an integer such that R i, this integer which we define now. Ri is di minus delta i plus one is greater or equal than one. So we take this d delta i's such that they satisfy this. Okay. Now take d greater or equal than zero to be an integer and let this L delta bold face, uh, let Ld bold face delta to be the classes of polynomials which are either zero, of course, in this quotient ring here. Okay. Quotient ring, we take the classes of polynomials which are either zero or have degree less or equal than D, and such that when you, you consider F as a polynomial in Xi, the degree of S, F is less than Ri, this, 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 this number here, okay? Less than Ri. But now we do this for all I, we don't fix an S. Now we, for do, we do this for all I. We have restrictions in the degree of f when considered as a polynomial xi. So we call this c d bold delta uh, to be the image of of this subspace using phi, and this is the code the code that we have defined. So uh, 
So let J be an integer from one to M. So J uh, characterizes a uh, position here, okay, in the M tuple. So we claim that there exists N recovering sets, R1, J, 2R, and J, each containing the position J, such that when you take off these positions, these sets are pairwise joint, and for each I, we have that the cardinality of the set is Ri plus delta I minus one, which is exactly Di. We, we, this is come, comes for free from the definition of Ri. And the entries of the entries at any set of Ri positions in this recovering set determine the entries in the remaining delta I minus one positions. Okay, so um, so maybe since we started at uh, sixteen. Uh, then um, I can talk about until uh, 5 p.m. Right? Perfect. Yes, yes. Okay. So I don't I don't run too much, <laughs> but I don't want to overtime. If necessary, at the end I will talk. Uh, I will subsume what I want to say. Anyway, so now this is a proof that I want to make. So let to prove this claim, let f be then a polynomial such that the degree of the of f is less equal than the the degree of f in the variable x i is less than r i okay so that uh, when we evaluate f in this polynomials we have a, an element of the code that I have just defined so let j be an, an a number an, an integer from one to m so this marks a position and let of course p j uh, is a point of x we such that f f p j is the jth entry in the code order, of course. So, okay, so from I to one, from one to N, we will define these sets, which of course will be our recovering sets. So what we do, we fix the, the entries of, of PJ, we will use the entries of PJ, except in the ith position. In the ith position, we let uh, this, the entries vary in A sub I. So clearly the number of uh, points here, all of these are points of X. The number of points here is exactly D sub I, which is the cardinality of A sub I, okay? So clearly, of course, PJ is an element here. The cardinality of this recovery set is D I. And it's easy to see that if you take on, uh, or if you intersect two distinct of these, two distinct recovery sets for distinct values of a1 and a, I, I1 and a, I2, you only get PJ. So this already proves, I, I didn't prove that this is a recovery set, but I proved that there exist any sets, in uh, a set of any sets such that uh, the cardinality uh, satisfies this equality. And when you take J off, J is considered, of course, there I, instead of considering positions, I consider points. It doesn't matter. When you take PJ or when you take the position J, these are pairwise disjoints, disjoint sets. So what's left is to prove that the entries of any set of RI in the end, in any set of RI positions in the set determine the entries in the remaining delta I minus one positions. Okay. So to prove this, we write F as a polynomial in F X sub I. Okay. So of course the coefficients are polynomials without the variable xi. Okay, so let v be, uh, uh, here of course, uh, this index goes from zero to ri minus one because uh, of this uh, condition here. Uh, and uh, so, okay, let v be a number from zero to ri minus one. Of course, g, the, this coefficient, which is a polynomial that does not have the variable Xi, when you take GV and evaluate in any of the, in all of these points, you get the same result because there's no uh, Xi variable there, okay? So suppose that we know the values E1 to E, uh, we know the values E1 to ER sub I of F evaluated F at RI distinct points of the set. So I know the values of F evaluated at Ri points of the set, okay? This means that we know the values of, because here's the polynomial, we know these values for Ri distinct values B, okay? I, I, I uh, 
that that result, I said that when I evaluate GV at any of these points, I always get the same result, which I call CV. So I know the, this, I know the result of the sum for are I distinct values of B, of B, okay? So let's say that I, I know that EJ, E sub J is this sum for BJ, okay? We rewrite these equations here as a matrix product, okay? So here, of course, I know these BJs here. I know these results. And so I can determine this, the number of C, the, these values of C0 to CRI minus one, because of course, this is a Van der Mond matrix. And um, after I determine these numbers, then I can find the, res, the, the values of F at any of these points, because I already know the, the CVs, those, that, those values, those numbers, CVs that I, 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 I defined here, okay? So this is how, the knowledge of a set of RI entries in the, in the in, or, or the value of F in RI of these points determine the values in the remaining delta I minus one, okay? So um, again, this is just, uh, I, I'm just uh, recalling what I have defined here. So I, we, for the dimension, we proved that if you, if you take the classes of these monomials, which monomials which belong to the footprint have degree less or equal than D and the power of Xi is less than Ri for all I. So this is a basis for this, uh, the, the basis for this uh, FQ sub, uh, uh, linear subspace. So and the, the number of uh, elements here is just a dimension of that code. And uh, now how do we count this? How do we count the number of this, these monomials? So uh, we just use that there's a bijection between the set of monomials uh, in, in variables of degree up to D and the set of monomials in N plus one variables of degree exactly D, okay? So uh, using this bijection, we know that the number of, of monomials there is just the coefficient of T to the D in this product. So here, this product comes from uh, considering uh, powers of this of these variables here, uh, where I take the power of xi to be at most ri minus one. And here I just complete the it's just the power the power of x zero that completes to the number d. Okay, so uh, I'm almost uh, you know, finishing my time. But anyway, let let me just say that we do some tricks that we may follow. In the, in, the, in the PDF later. And uh, finally, we just, uh, we arrived that the, the, that series that I wrote there is exactly this product. And now we have here a very explicit product. And then you can figure out, it's not difficult to figure out what is, what is the coefficient of T to the D here, okay? So I'm just going over this because this is a sort of a usual trick. Maybe many of you know these tricks. So we just count this number and this is the coefficient of T to the D there. So that's how we, we, we determine the dimension of the code, okay? And as for the minimum distance, we do a procedure which is similar to what I had done. I explained before in the, for the affine Cartesian codes. So uh, again, here we have a certain function, let's say, of these numbers, these integers, S1 to Sn. And uh, I, we proved that the, the minimum distance of the code that we define is equal to the minimum of this function when you impose this condition that the sum of the Si's is less or equal than D. The Si's all, all, uh, already have to obey this condition, but we also impose this condition here, okay? Uh, so maybe you, you can think, but uh, maybe I, I re later, uh, in the beginning of the talk, I, I, I showed you a closed formula of, for this minimum. So why didn't we find this here? Actually, we couldn't find a closed formula. What we, we found a closed formula when we impose this condition on the deltas. Okay, when we impose this condition on the deltas, then we have a closed formula, which is, oops, sorry, 
which is similar to that closed formula that I presented before, also involves k and l and d1 to the, the n, so on. But uh, we have examples that show that when we don't have this condition, this closed formula doesn't hold. So uh, maybe it's not so easy to find a closed formula for the minimum distance at this time. We also have other results, but uh, I, I don't have uh, time to, to talk about them. And anyway, uh, this is uh, everything I, I wanted to talk today. So I thank you very much for the patience <laughs> of uh, being here with me up to this moment. So thank you, thank you very much. Well, let's thank Cicero for this nice talk. <laughs> let's open for comments or questions. Why well, I'll start with a first comment that it's very impressive that you can get all these new ideas, right? these very new ideas, and present examples very explicitly of this using your uh, this is your original example. You can adapt it and produce this. Well, this well I call illustrations that you can really calculate everything. This is very impressive. Right? Because normally you have bounds for this, but now you're presenting the, oh, this is the formula and this is the, this is very impressive. Congratulations for this. Let me open for questions, please. No, I just uh, want to comment that this, uh, these codes, uh, these local recovery codes, they are not just, uh, um, uh, let's say, a theoretical curiosity, although they have been uh, introduced, uh, let's say, recently from 2012. Um, to now, but they are already being used by, by Microsoft and other companies to store things in the cloud. There are papers by, 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 the, by the guys that implemented this in Facebook and Microsoft and uh, that, that show how they did using this locally recoverable code. So this, this I mean, this is not just a, a theoretical uh, curiosity. They are really, really being used. Wow. Are you going to become a rich man? Or? <laughs> Very probably <laughs> not. Uh, beyond that point. <laughs> Let me open for other questions. I forgot to, to, to ask for patents for this course. <laughs> oh, they're public domain. <laughs> uh, may, may I ask a question, Emma? Sure. Yes, Cicero. please. Uh, it, just a curiosity, Cicero. Uh, in your first slides, you compared your uh, one code to the other one, and I, I think it was the, the minimum distance. You, you have some inequality. I, I really don't, don't, don't remember. But the, the question is, uh, do you think that you can try to, to produce uh, some, some other codes uh, which can, can be better in some way to this one that you, you have just shown? Or do you think it's the best one in, in, when you fix some, some of the parameters? What do you think? Uh, well, uh, first, uh, let me say that some, uh, as, I, as, I, as I remarked uh, before, some of those codes, they are optimal in the sense that they uh, attain the singleton bound, expected singleton bound for, for, the, class, for the classes that, that which they belong. But uh, normally, these Reed Miller type codes, they are not, uh, they don't excel, let's say. And they don't, uh, uh, they, they don't uh, break uh, records. But they are, but they are not uh, bad codes either. They are sort of midway codes. And they are used because uh, of, the, of the easiness of uh, the, uh, the coding. So many of these codes, they are easy to decode, so they are used because uh, it's uh, when you when you have those codes that uh, attain records so on. But uh, you know, uh, in the implementation, uh, are they uh, really uh, nice? For example, uh, Reed Solomon codes are, are extremely old codes, and they are they are in, in many situations they are not uh, um, the best, but today they, 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 be, they became so widely spread and used that today you have some, some ships that uh, encode and decode using hardware. 
So these lightning fast. So people use them. So uh, you have you have to. I, I mean, sometimes I, I really don't don't worry. Sometimes when we uh, when we submit uh, papers, the referees ask for comparisons. You know, I do comparisons, but uh, sometimes you know, usually we, the, our codes are better than others and are worse than others. But but I know I don't think that people uh, the, the the electro engineers in in, in in computing people really worry about that. They worry about you know, for example, this locally recovery codes. You could ask you know why you know okay I understand there is an erasure someplace okay so let's do the following. I just I I I assume that there's some entry there, and I try to correct that word. Okay, no problem if there's an erasure. But the thing is that why these guys introduced this 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 uh, this definitions because then you make a lot less uh, operations. So that's why the, 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 the this this codes end up being used because you, you it's 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 cheaper in, in in computer time cheaper to to use local recovery codes than to to guess to just uh, assume that there was some some entry there and try to correct the code. So there's I, I really don't not care very much about this uh, these uh, records because uh, of this uh, all of this this, this thing that I mentioned. But you know uh, anyway some some codes in these classes are optimal. Thanks a lot, Cicero. Your, uh, Other so, questions? Oh, or so there, it, it, oh, sir. You are more interested in 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 other in other situations, not only on the records. So it's clear for me. Thanks a lot. Questions? Other questions and comments? May I ask a question? Sure. sure. Okay. Uh, first of all, uh, thank you very much, sister, for this very nice talk. It's the first time I have heard about the coding and I didn't know anything about it. And uh, as Emma told us, it's very impressive, the quality of the results. I was wondering if uh, it would be possible to use such theory to uh, design algorithm compressions or would you expect they uh, perform and nicely? Do you have any, any feeling on this? I haven't seen any uh, applications, at least, of, at least of these evaluation codes, in uh, in this uh, theory of uh, compressing data. I haven't seen, but but you know, um, maybe it's because nobody uh, really thought about that. Because uh, of course uh, you can do that. You can use codes to to compress data. Uh, it's okay. a, it's a way. Uh, but at, uh, of course, in, at least in, uh, in some stage of the compression, not, uh, of course, uh, doesn't solve all the problem, but at some stage you can use, uh, you can use codes. But I haven't seen any, any papers uh, dealing with that. But anyway, it's an interesting thing to, to, to think about. Cool. Uh, so uh, may I ask another question? Can sure. you uh, show me this slide 15, please? The, the last? Uh, 15, I, I think ah, that's 15. the one okay. below the last. Where appears the matrix, uh, product of matrices? Sure. Uh, one last, yes, this one. Uh, is this matrix, is the fast Fourier transform or anything associated to it? I don't know, I never thought about this uh, in like this. What happens is that, uh, uh, what I can say, tell you is that all, all, all papers on uh, mm -hmm. um, locally recoverable codes that I, I saw, at some point or another, they arrive at this Vandermond matrix. Mm -hmm. So uh, maybe, uh, maybe we are just not having any new ideas, or maybe there is really something. Uh, behind the, the appearance of this, I see. Uh, but, but, in... but but nobody really um, uh, some 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 other in, in other talks 
people ask me about this but you know i don't know no but there's there's there hasn't been so far an investigation of why we end up always in this in this in this uh, situation but you know, maybe there's 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 a a more uh, let's say mm, theoretical or profound reason for this mm -hmm. It might be uh, fast Fourier transforms or, or, or things similar to that. Awesome. Cool, cool. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Well, let's thank again Professor Cicero for this wonderful talk. Thank you.